Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have a bunch of numbers. Looks like we have to add and subtract them. And we have some fractions as well. So this is guaranteed to be a lot of fun, especially being that we don't want to use a calculator. You certainly want to use that calculator in between your brain and a piece of paper and pencil. But when you do that, when you get away from using an actual calculator, you need to always be careful. And this problem is full of little situations that can definitely throw you off if you're not paying attention. But if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the solution to this in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through the actual process to simplify this numeric expression step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that tend to struggle in math, okay? It doesn't have to be that way. What you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test you're studying for, something like the GED, SAT, um, ASVAB, teacher certification exam, anything with the math section on it, or if you homeschool, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. Now, you should be taking awesome math notes if you are a math student. If you're not, well, most students, you know, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement in terms of their note taking. So improve your notes and things will get much, much better. But in the meantime, you can use my notes. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you the answer, and then we'll walk through the solution. So here uh, we have 7 minus 10 plus 1 third minus 12 plus 3 fourths. The answer is negative 167 over 12. So if you got this answer, let me go ahead and give you a nice happy face and A plus 100% and multiple stars for being pretty awesome in math today. Nice job. Now you could um, turn this into a mixed number. So if you got an, uh, another answer, you would have gotten this answer first and then you would have converted that into a mixed number. Maybe, maybe not. I'm gonna show you the mixed number version of this answer. So just in case uh, you were like, hey, I got an answer, I know I did it right. Well, hold on one second because you may have gotten the right uh, answer as well, but this is probably the most common answer. But uh, before we get started on this, let's take a look at the situation. We have fractions, okay? We know we're going to have to deal with fractions, uh, so that means that you're going to have to know you're going to have to know how to add and subtract fractions. And then here we have these numbers, but these numbers right here, like this minus 10, this is actually a negative value. This is like plus negative 10, and this is like plus negative 12. So you're going to have to know. Um, how to deal with positive and negative numbers and fractions. So these are the kind of the uh, main skills that you're going to need to know in order to do this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the problem now. But when we look at this problem, we now uh, I basically told you that this is um, a plus negative 10. Let's go ahead and just change all these values or this subtraction sign into plus negative. Okay, this is going to make this a lot easier. So really what this comes down to is we're just adding up all these numbers. I'm going to add up 7, a negative 10, a 1 third, a negative 12, and a 3 fourths. So when you... Um, your problem involves all of addition. Let's suppose I have one plus three plus nine plus six. I can add up uh, these numbers in any different way I want to because it's all addition. Order doesn't make a difference. So, um, you know, kind of keeping that in mind, what I'm going to do, now this is not the way you, uh, it's required for you to do this problem, but what I'm going to do is I'm like, no, I have two fractions. I'm going to kind of couple these together over here. Okay, so I'll deal with these fractions here in a second. But I have these nice, lovely integer values. Let me go ahead and just kind of organize all these right here. So this would be 7 plus a negative 10 plus a negative 12. So let's go ahead and just get the answer to this so we can get some quick momentum here. So negative 10 plus negative 12 is negative 22 plus a positive 7. That gives us negative 15. All right, so all right, uh, these three numbers is negative 15. And then I got to add up these fractions here. And um, that's going to be the next focus to this problem. And of course, hopefully you know how to add. Uh, you know, these are pretty simple fractions in terms of the denominators. But one third 
plus three-fourths. That's what we're going to focus on right now. So let's go ahead and get into this. So how do we add fractions? Well, in order to add and subtract fractions, the denominators need to be the same. Okay, so here I have one-third plus three-fourths. We can clearly see we don't have the same denominator, so we're going to need the what? We're going to need the lowest common denominator. The lowest common denominator is 12, okay? Now, hopefully you knew that. By the way, if you're struggling with any of these uh, skills, uh, whether it be fractions or positive and negative numbers, maybe I'll give you a couple suggestions. One, I have a ton of uh, extra videos um, or additional videos on my YouTube channel. I cover all these topics, but if you want like more formal instruction, I would strongly suggest checking out like my pre-algebra course or maybe my math foundations course. You can find those at my math help program. But anyways, the uh, lowest, con uh, lowest common denominator is 12. Now, why it's 12? Again, you want to go ahead and check out those resources I just uh, told you, but the LCD is 12. So that means we need to change these fractions such that the, de uh, the denominators are 12. In order to do that, I need to multiply this denominator, this 3, by a 4. So i got to multiply the numerator by 4. And then over here, I have to multiply that 4 by a 3 to get a 12. So i got to multiply that numerator by a 3. So I'm going to end up with the fractions 4, 4 12s plus 9 twelves. Now I can add these fractions because they have the same denominator, okay? And so you just simply add the numerators. 4 plus 9 is 13, or 13 over 12. That is the answer. Now there is a cool shortcut way to add and subtract fractions. Let me show you that real quick. Um, and again, I'm just going to show you this very, very fast, but I, you definitely want to follow up on this. I call it the bow tie method. And uh, again, you can uh, find... Uh, additional videos on this on my YouTube channel and in my math courses. But basically, you, you go in this uh, precise pattern. You're going to start from the bottom right. You're going to multiply this way. So 4 times 1 is 4. This is an addition problem, so I'm going to put plus. And then you're going to start from the bottom left. You're going to multiply this way. 3 times 3 is 9. That forms the numerator. Okay. And then over here, your last step is going to go from 3 times 4, this denominator times that denominator is 12. And check out what we get. We get 13 over 12. It is the same answer. Okay, so always um, when it comes to adding and subtracting fractions, you always want to keep two things in mind. One, LCD, if you need to find the LCD, and this bow tie method. It is definitely a lifesaver. But the bottom line is uh, the answer uh, of adding those two fractions is 13 over 12. So now we got to figure out whether negative 15 plus 13 over 12 is equal to. All right, so again, we added up these two fractions, and the answer was 13 over 12. So our problem now is this. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on. So negative 15 plus 13 over 12, what do we do? Well, the best uh, approach uh, to solve this particular problem is to think of negative 15 as a fraction. When you want to think of a number as a fraction, let's say I have number 7, I'm like, well, I don't see a fraction. We'll just put it over 1, and there is your fraction. So we could just think of this as negative 15 or negative 15 over 1 plus 13 twelves. And you can clearly see we do not have the same denominator to add these fractions up. So we need to get that LCD, which, of course, is what? 12. Okay, so if I multiply this denominator and numerator by 12, and that's what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to end up with the... Uh, a, uh, two fractions with the same denominator, which would be 12. So 12 times 1, of course, is 12. 12 times negative 15 is negative 180 plus 13 over 12. So now I'm simply going to add those numerators, negative 180 plus 13 over 12. And uh, again, uh, we're not using a calculator here, so you have to be very you know, focused in terms of positive negative number rules. So negative 180 plus 13 is our negative 167 over 12. And this is, again, the final answer, okay, the final product. And this is also fully simplified, okay? When you look at this fraction here, you would want to use things like the divisibility rules and other kind of rules. So you would want to try to make sure that you, uh, you could, uh, you know, reduce this or simplify this. But at the end of the day, that's pretty much uh, reduced. And that is the answer, okay? So no need to turn this into a uh, mixed number. A mixed number is like, okay, here's four thirds. I'm going to turn this into 
uh, uh, a mixed number of fractions. So I'm going to go uh, uh, 4 divided by 3. So that's what? Um, four, 3 goes into 4, 1. So 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract 1. So that's uh, 1 and 1 third. So this is an improper fraction, and this is its mixed number equivalent. Okay, remember when it comes to fractions, you have a proper fraction, which is something like 1 half. The denominator is bigger than the numerator. And then something like 4 thirds is an improper fraction where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. And every improper fraction you can write as a mixed number fraction, something like 1 and 1 third. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this problem a bit differently. And we're going to pick it up right here. Okay, so remember, we got this problem down to negative 15 plus 13 over 12. But some of you might have, at this point, uh, took this path to uh, get the right answer. So let's pick up the problem right here in a different way. Okay, so let's go down here. And let's pick up this problem this way. So negative 15 plus 13 over 12. We know the answer uh, to the problem is negative 167 over 12. But let's uh, turn that 167 over 12 into a mixed number. Okay, just so we could see the answer as a mixed number. So we're going to take that 167 divided by 12. So you can see the division here. So 12 goes into 16 one time. 1 times 12 is 12. And I subtract, I get 4, da, 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 da. Hopefully you know how to divide, and uh, you can see that I have a remainder of 11, okay? So uh, 167 divided by 12 is 13 with remainder 11, or I can write that as 11 over 12. So if you don't know how to write uh, improper fraction as a mixed number, that's another skill that you're going to need to know. But anyways, uh, 167 divided by 12 uh, is equal to 13 over over or sorry, 13 and 11 twelfths, but being that this is a negative value, we would need to put a negative sign right there. Okay, so negative 167 over 12, this is an uh, improper fraction, and this is its equivalent mixed number um, uh, value. Okay, so negative 13, uh, negative 13 and 11 twelfths is equal to negative 167 over 12. Okay, now why do I bring that up? Well, maybe some of you, uh, well, actually, let's just have the answer, okay, uh, as expressed as a mixed number. So remember in the beginning of the video when I showed you the answer, I said negative 167 over 12. If you had negative 13 uh, and 11 12 as your final answer, well, you got the problem right. I must give you another little happy face and A plus and a 100%. So nice job. Okay, so these are the answers to uh, the problem. But I'm bringing this up uh, for this particular reason right here. Some of you might like to work with mixed numbers, okay? So let's just keep this in mind. This is the answer as well. Okay, so now let's take a look at the problem this way. Negative 15 plus 13 twelfths. So let's take that 13 twelfths right there. That's an improper fraction. And let's uh, rewrite that as a uh, mixed number, okay? So I need to take that 13 and divide by 12, and when I do that, I'm gonna get one and one twelfths, okay? One and one twelfths, and uh, one and one twelfths, when you see a fraction, a mixed number fraction, that means one plus a, another one twelfths, okay? That's what that means. So really, some of you might have looked at this and said, oh, I wanna turn this into a mixed number. Now, this is not the recommend, uh, recommended way that I would do this problem, but I'm just gonna you know, entertain this for a second because some of you might have done it this way and I don't want you to feel like you did anything wrong. Okay, so 13 twelfths is the same thing as one and one twelfths, which is the same thing as one plus one twelfth. Okay, so I can look at this problem as negative 15 plus one and uh, one plus another one twelfth. So at this point, I'm like, oh, okay, I can add these up. Negative 15 plus 1 is what? Well, let's go ahead and do that now. So that's negative 14 plus a positive 1 twelfths. And this can be kind of confusing for students. Now, you here we have another fraction problem. But some of you could interpret this problem this way, okay? If you were kind of like, uh, you know, really, really on top of your fractions. Let's take a look at this. Let's just forget the, the 14 right now. So... We know we're going to have to uh, subtract away a 1 12th from the 14. And then, of course, the sign is going to be negative. So here's 14, or here's 13, and here's 14. And let's say these are all 12. So let's see here. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So here's 12 
little um, uh, units in between 13 and uh, 14. And of course, this would be 12 twelfths. So if I subtract away 1 12th, how much is remaining? Well, I have right here 11 twelfths remaining. So I would have 13 and 11 twelfths. And of course, the sign would be negative. And that could be kind of confusing for some uh, students to interpret. So that's why I wouldn't suggest converting your fractions into um, mixed number fractions. You certainly can, or right here, again, you can just you know deal with another fraction problem and you know multiply this by 12 to get the same LCD, et cetera. So I think when it comes to problems like this, you wanna be, you know, um, you wanna just kind of get rid of all your fraction problems by either using that bow tie method or just getting the LCD and cleaning everything up. You really kind of wanna stay away from mixed number fractions. Mixed number fractions are excellent. It's uh, especially, uh, you know, if your um, values are already given as mixed numbers. If you're already dealing with mixed numbers, then that's perfectly fine, okay? But don't go from improper fractions into mixed numbers to try to make your problem easier. You're just gonna kind of create more work for yourself um, as a general rule, okay? There's always exceptions, but hopefully, okay, you got something out of this video, okay? And the main thing is this, a problem like this can look fairly simplistic, but you know, you gotta be careful and you gotta respect the work, okay? Math is a game of focus, all right? And that's pretty much what it is. It's a game, in a, uh, you know, learning any game like checkers or chess or basketball, you can get better at it. But it requires practice and it requires, you know, uh, focus. And that's the whole idea behind my videos is to show you even someone like myself, you know, when I'm doing these problems, I've been doing math for years, and I got degrees in math, master degree. It doesn't make a difference. I still have to bring focus and attention to each and every math problem I do. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.